welcome to the journey again so last week we discussed about uh, the five t's we started on that journey so on the first t of being transferred of ourselves from that of the fallen state to that of the state where that our lord jesus won on the cross and gave us that gift and uh, made us sit together in christ jesus in heavenly places so we discussed about that privilege that we got because the fallen state of uh, man because the evil one the satan deceived adam and eve and as a result we had to uh, sacrifice the uh, privilege that we got from our lord and we had been fallen so let me that's a, a quick uh, a reminder or a quick uh, reminisce about what we discussed last week but let us let me also start this week's session and discussion with that of a simple reminder a very profound one actually in that case is that uh, in the new testament after lord jesus was crucified on the cross and took our sins and made us heirs co-heirs to the state that we fell from we are now above what satan or even adam could uh, was in the beginning mind you that the bible scriptures say in the new testament that we are made to sit together in christ jesus and adam and eve did not sit together in christ jesus it's just that the lord descended to garden of eden and talked with adam in the cool of the day every day they weren't seated with christ so we are such privileged in such manner that we are right now able to sit together in christ jesus in heavenly places because that is the 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 gravity that's the enormity and that's the privilege which is unparalleled which the old testament prophets and kings were is more zealous to see this day that you and i are living right now that our lord jesus died for us and as a result the lost inheritance of our lives of our the inheritance that our lord jesus uh, wanted us to achieve or to inherit from the beginning from our lord father so he made it possible for us to access it and established us so that's the truth so that's the truth so that based on that of tra- being transferred from that of old state to that of the new state Uh, we discussed now today i am going to discuss about the second t about transformation or transforming ourselves so uh, i used to be a movie fan so i watched this uh, series called transformers so when every time that i watch that and i see some lovely vehicles being transformed into some megatrons and uh, bumblebees and all that i'm pretty sure you must have watched that movie at least an advertisement Uh, it's very popular among kids right now you can see that suddenly uh, something a vehicle turning or transforming itself into a different shape so that's what the whole essence of the transformers movie is all about actually in christian life also what the lord wants us to do is a complete transformation inside out and of course in the movie these transformers could always transform themselves back to the old state but that's not what the lord wants us to do i'm just taking that example from the worldly sense but let's dive a little bit deep into understanding what the transformation of the lord really means the first example the most striking example of an inner man uh, transformed or the outer man be transformed to that of christ nature is saul becoming paul so a sinful person a person who persecuted uh, the christians uh, and uh, the person that who was against the christians who would have done almost all the atrocities meted out all the atrocities that he could think of who would have uh, carried out the orders of the sanhedrin and while his way on his way to jerusalem the sinful man was encountered by our lord jesus and he fell off the horse and his eyes were blinded and this individual became one of the the most striking influential individuals who wrote most of the new testament gospels and he became 
from Saul to Paul, a major transformation. That kind of a transformation. Paul did not go back to the state of Saul. He considered everything that Saul had as dung, as rubbish. He disdained them in uh, view of the uh, the crown and the glory and the promise uh, that he, he, he was to get and which he got in the end uh, from Christ Jesus. So that's one of the transformation. And he himself writes in Book of Romans uh, 12, 2, and thus it says, I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable to God, which is your reasonable service. And do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, wholly acceptable to God, which is your reasonable service, that is to transform our bodies as a living sacrifice. So a lot of people, we, we leave our bodies to fulfill the pleasures of the world. We uh, often uh, seek the pleasures of the world. That is what the body, the carnality of the body wants. But the Lord exhausts us here. The Holy Spirit advises us, transform that thinking pattern as a living sacrifice to the Lord. Because the Lord, Jesus Christ, when he crucified, he transformed us from that of the old state to the new state. He transferred us and in the process he transformed he wanted us to transform our thinking as well because after that he says that both my Father and the Holy Spirit, that all three of them would come and live in us because this is the current, the modern day temple of the Lord. So it's the temple of the Lord need, cannot be blemished, cannot be tarnished. And we cannot seek the pleasures in the world continuously and we need to continually transform ourselves. And that is a reasonable service as Paul exhorts. So the Holy Spirit exhorts through or advises through Paul to present ourselves as wholly acceptable, as the least or the reasonable service. And let's go through the verse 2. And do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of our minds. So if you conform to our world, what happens is that we are not no longer transforming. We are going by the tide of the world, by the pleasures of the world, by seeking money and being successful and being uh, lust-seeking individuals and those who want to succeed at any cost. And bearing all the atrocities, the, uh, the jealousies, the hypocrisies, the murders, lustrous and canonite thoughts, so we con con continuously subject our bodies to that kind of a tide in the world. That's why, that, as I mentioned in my last episode, every day that we need to die to ourselves, we need to do a baptizo every day. That means that we need to closely examine our thoughts and our behaviors from morning to evening in what manner that we are still holding remnants of Canaanite thoughts and feelings. So in that case, that we need to transform ourselves by renewing our mind all the time. It's not an easy task to renew our mind. We can actually renew uh, uh, something like we can, uh, if you want to color wash a house, you can do color wash, paint, a wall. You can even renew your vehicle. You can renew your memberships. You can renew anything that you want. You can buy a new phone or something like that. You can renew almost everything, material things. But how can you renew something that which is, uh, you cannot see. Your mind is something that you cannot see. Remember, my brothers and sisters, the human brain as the psychiatrists and the psychologists have identified, which the Lord has made. Lord has planted wisdom in, uh, in, in our organs, in our mind, that is found in Job 38, 36. And the wisdom, the human brain, operates in such a manner, whatever that you hear from morning to evening, nothing is forgotten. And you might say, okay, I try my level best to study and I can't remember a single word. 
fine because that it's not interesting and you do not pay much attention to that that's why it is not lingering or deeply rooted inculcated in your thoughts test this if you think that you are forgetful try to forget something you can never forget anything try to forget a memory you cannot forget it it's deeply rooted in your head in your mind it's in your brain it's inculcated it's it's engraved so this is the reason why paul exhorts us through the holy spirit renewing our mind is very important how do we renew our mind by continuously reading the word continuously feeding the word of god into our lives from morning to evening because the word of god is the truth against the but against what is true in the world so we need to fill our minds with what is truth against what is true of the material things in the world so that is what the renewing of the mind is all about so you might think okay that i predominantly talked about the old testament about exodus and uh, talked about uh, our journey through the confrontation of the, the the six tribes in exodus is there any form of transformation the lord is talking about there's plenty from the time that uh, his children israelites were taken out of egypt lord performed a transformation they he wanted them to think in a different manner they were always going with the old state and thinking that the onions the leeks and the carrots that they were eating were much better we discussed about it as a gurgashai spirit falling back on the old self but the lord said no renew your mind renew your your objective and god literally physically and spiritually did a renewing of uh, the israelites in the wilderness that the the people those who the generation that came out of egypt is not the generation that entered the promised land a complete new generation came up. so there's a transformation itself in the old testament so later on many 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 years later we find in first samuel chapter 10 verse 9 uh we find that uh, another story about uh, king saul so it was when he had turned his back to go from samuel that god gave him another heart and all those signs came to pass that day if you read so it was when he had turned his back to go from samuel that god gave him an another heart another heart that means king saul was given another heart that means the transformation from that of the state that he used to be in and as a result he started prophesying he started singing with the prophets and because the heart changed so that's the same thing that which happens my brothers and sisters when we transform ourselves consciously making an effort to transform ourselves in order to uh, to to be the change that the lord wants us to be Let's take another example with regards to uh, transformation. Uh, what about Zacchaeus? Now, Zacchaeus in we find it in Luke uh, chapter nineteen, verse fifteen. We find the story is a very beautiful story. Zacchaeus is a very uh, vertically uh, challenged individual. That when Jesus was passing through, and he uh, climbed the sycamore tree and wanted to look at Jesus or to listen to his uh, sermons or his preaching. and see jesus stopped and looked at the tree and said tonight i am going to dine with you and the lord's words zacchaeus make haste and come down for today i must stay at your house in other words to dine with him stay at his house now this is a a total a transformational statement that he made in front of the jews and the pharisees a tax collector zacchaeus a sinful person like matthew and jesus goes to dine with him and to stay at his house that's an amazing a transformational state the secret here is sacius made a change he wanted to make a change by transforming or renewing his thoughts renewing his mind he knew that he was short he knew that he was vertically challenged so what could he do he thought okay i need to now change the way that i think if all the others think that i cannot see jesus because that i am short okay fine let me find a way he renewed his mind 
he thought about it in a different way and climbed the sycamore tree. And that stopped Jesus. And that changed Jesus. And mind you, what happened physically here, there's this deeper spiritual understanding, a spiritual revelation, Rema here. The minute Zacchaeus thought about the transformation and executed it by climbing the tree, Jesus said, I'm going to now stay at your place. In other words, Jesus comes to your life only if you transform yourself. If you renew your mind every day with the word that Jesus makes it a dwelling place in your life. It is mentioned that Father, Son and the Holy Spirit will come and dwell in you. Dwell in you in an old body he cannot. If you continue to do sinful things, if you continue to engage your body in things that you used to do when in the past, you, the, the Trinity cannot come and dwell in you. The Father cannot find his temple as holy in your body, in yours and my body, if we continue to do the sinful things. So Zacchaeus made that thought, he executed it. And he, although he is considered as a sinful person by the society, he renewed his mind because he was zealous towards Lord Jesus. And Lord Jesus said, I am going to come into your house. In other words, spiritually, when we are zealous of the word, when we are zealous and heartily we ask ourselves, okay, Lord, I want to transform my mind, my thinking pattern, the way I approach things, my own modus operandi, the way that I behold things, the way I talk to people, the way I look at things from a different lens. I want to look at it from your diff from the lens of the word. So the Lord comes and dwells in you. At that time, Lord Jesus would say, tonight I need to stay in your house. Tonight I'm going to dine with you. What a beautiful revelation it is and what a beautiful promise that the Lord gives in that such manner. My brothers and sisters, these are the secrets of the words. So you need to grasp them. The minute you grasp them, your life becomes more meaningful. And this is how the Lord speaks. Lord does not supernaturally speak to you in a different grave voice that he spoke face to face with Moses. That's in the Old Testament. Right now, he speaks to us through his word. The more you spend time zealously, in the word, the more the Lord will reveal things to you from the Logos to the Rhema. So this is the transformation that you need to renew your mind every day with the word of the Lord. Make this the phone that you take in the, in the beginning of the day. A lot of people, I mean, even myself included, the minute I wake up, I grab hold of the phone. The minute I wake up, that, that, that's the first thing I do. And the phone is with me right throughout. Why not a Bible? Why not the word of the Lord? Grab hold of the word. Early in the morning, read any any chapter of the Bible because this is the, uh, the, the word which is breathed by the Holy Spirit. So when we do, um, when we consciously make an effort to transform ourselves, to renew our minds with the word of the Lord, the Lord uh, will definitely honor your thoughts and honor your efforts. And he will give you rhema, the revelations, and your life will be more, much, much more abundantly beautiful. So as I'm talking to you today, uh, let me give you a, a, a real-time experience that I got today. So my uh, son and my, my family, uh, to those who are new, my son is only two years of age, uh, a tiny little fellow, and he's such a joy in our lives. So we went on a trip today, and there was a tarmac, and... Uh, he fell actually and he was bleeding and he has some bruises on his head and on his nose and we were about a good 80 kilometers away from the city from the nearest uh, uh, hospital so when he fell and uh, i had uh, i couldn't contain myself i had tears in my eyes and equally my wife was also uh, quite devastated because this is the first time i seen blood oozing out of my son's nose and of his forehead and when we brought him to uh, the hospital the emergency it was such a struggle to get him to lie down on bed because he's only two years of age and he was in pain and the doctors were trying to you know address his wounds and all that and I saw his whole countenance being transformed and I saw how the tears came into his life and he was looking at me uh, with tears in his eyes and is and 
I was just holding down on him, pressing down on him on the bed because the doctors couldn't attend to the wounds. That is a transformational change in my life. But I experienced for the first time, I'm pretty sure that you, uh, my brothers and sisters with, uh, with children, of course, you must have gone through this kind of experience. But for me, it's a, it's a brand new experience. And when that happened and when we brought him, he's quite safe right now, praise the Lord. And when we brought him home and I sat down and I was just pondering about the situation. I was thanking the Lord, Lord, that you saved us from uh, uh, from a from a, uh, a serious uh, injury or an accident or something like that. The worst thing would have happened because he, it was on a slope, on a downhill that he, you know, he fell and he would have rolled down and that would have been more devastating. What the Holy Spirit put in my heart was, son, in, as your son was crying in time of desperation, he was looking at you with so much of dependent eyes, with tears in his eyes. And while the doctors were trying to attend to his wounds, that time he didn't know that they were trying to do something good, but the pain of the wounds was so excruciating. But as the father, you held him so close. In the same manner, my brothers and sisters, the message that my Holy Spirit gave me is that when we are hurt, when we are in the deepest bottom and when we cannot do anything, when we are totally wounded, that is the time the Father, the Holy Spirit will hold us even more dear to and he will hold us even more closer. Just like I held my son when he was so down and when he was crying. And at that time, his pain was so much that he did not know that, you know, the father was holding. In the same manner, when we go through the most dire, painful situations in our lives and experiences in our lives, we ask at that time, Father, where are you? God, where are you? Holy Spirit, where are you? Lord Jesus, where are you? All these words that you have written, where is the benefit of that? Where is the manifestation of that word? We question. We question. My brothers and sisters, as the Holy Spirit gave me the experience this afternoon, and later on I started pondering, what did the Holy Spirit told me? So I reiterate, as your son held on to you, Although it was painful at that time, he must have thought, what is this my father trying to do? He's holding me so tight, so I can't move. And somebody is like hurting me by cleaning my wounds. He doesn't know that he's cleaning of his wounds, but it was hurting him. The same manner when we are going through trouble, we think our father is not holding us. But actually, that's the time he is the closest to our lives. That's the time he is so deeply closest to our lives that we don't feel it. Why? Because we are not transformed. Our mind is not renewed to think and to see him as the dear father as we should see him. We always think that in time of need, he's not there. Because the world thinks like that. In time of need, the world thinks about money. In time of need, the world thinks about a bank loan. The world thinks about uh, another human being, your father, mother, or a rich uncle who is in London. Your world thinks about material things. world does not think about the dear father who is so close to us. So this is an eye-opening revelation for me in the afternoon, what happened, my brothers and sisters. I thought of sharing this with you. I do not know as I'm recording this on this particular day, uh, the very incident took place and the Lord prompted me, share this. That is the true essence of transforming our lives, transforming, renewing our thinking pattern renewing our thoughts that our father is always there with us so this is a realization the reality the truth if we get it into our hearts my brothers and sisters whatever trouble we go through we will feel the manifest presence of our lord the father in our lives holding our hands just like you just like me being a father you being parents and soon Whoever is watching soon to be parents, you would hold your precious child in your hand, in your arms, that you would do anything, anything under sun and moon to protect him and to take his pain away from that particular moment. Our Lord the Father would also do the same for us and much more, much more. That is the thinking that we need to renew our minds with my brothers and sisters. If we can renew our minds with that kind of assurance about our Father, the Holy Spirit, our Lord Jesus Christ, transform the way that we thought about uh, our Lord Jesus, transformed 
from the way that we think thought about the bible i am i guarantee you my brothers and sisters that the 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 troubles that we face that we will never feel alone that we will never feel ostracized or disdained or discarded because we know our lord the father is there tangible presence of the lord this is what we call the tangible presence of the lord whenever that we are in trouble so that only happens when we completely do a flip side complete inside out transformation inside out transformation that is what the holy scriptures are talking about my brothers and sisters uh, you might think okay this story is what i experienced today but let's also back it up with uh, the scriptures what does romans 5 verses 3 to 5 say romans chapter 5 verses 3 to 5 and not only that but we also glory in tribulations knowing that tribulation produces perseverance and perseverance character and character hope now hope does not disappoint because the love of god has been poured out in our hearts by the holy spirit who was given to us and not and not only that but we also glory in tribulations knowing that tribulation produces perseverance and perseverance character and character hope now hope does not disappoint because the love of god has been poured out in our hearts by the holy spirit who was given to us paul talks about the holy spirit talks about a complete transformation tribulation in other words suffering if there's no suffering there's no transformation if i didn't see my son suffering i would not have had this thought about transforming this idea the holy spirit would not have nudged this idea into me to share this with you if there's no suffering my brothers and sisters there's no transformation in time of need that's the time that we go on go or never knees time of need or never knees so when we go on our knees in time of need my brothers and sisters that tribulation that we go through creates in us a perseverance a transformation a complete change of character a complete change of character in order to depend on our lord i mean as you already know i mean i have gone through i suffered quite a few ordeals in my life and when every time the doctors came to me in past instances roshan there's nothing we can do our science does not supplement or complement the situation that you are in and some doctors will say okay pray to the god that whom you believe in so that in time of need even science tells there's nothing they can do pray to god in time of need and they in other words insinuate or prevaricate that the transformation that you need the solution that you need is not with us but with the lord and they refer to many many other pagan gods we don't know but to us is the father the holy spirit and lord jesus christ who made it possible for us to reach out to him and call him abba in time of need my son he could only mumble a few words because he's only 2 years of, of age and he's catching a few words he mumbles at the time when he was crying if he could cry out my name called father father help me i am in pain if he was jewish he would say abba abba help me i don't know what the hebrew word for help is but he would have definitely said abba the same man as my brothers and sisters when we are in need call the name abba and he will never turn his ears away from us and never turn his face from us just like i did not turn my face away from my little son who was in in agony and he was in tears and lord also cries in the same manner as i mentioned that if i could cry and tears came to my mind to see my my child suffering in pain how much more our father who's the spirit who's our father 
he says i am you are my children would you call me father lord asked that question lord asked that question in the old testament i have chosen you as my children would you call me father or make me your father that's a beautiful revelation and my heart sank couple of days ago when i read it but i today i experienced it so when we are in need when we call him he's there rest assured i have experienced it in my life i'm pretty sure you will also experience it the same manner. so to do that renew our minds let's renew our minds transform ourselves let us die to ourselves every day and go through the baptism of our holy spirit of renewing our minds every day and it's more like uh, that's what this channel th- through which brother dilanta has been always telling if you are dead to yourself what would you feel if you are dead to yourself uh, and if you have transformed your mind to think okay none of the things in the world will affect me but only the things of the world will affect me not the world then nothing would you would feel i mean let me take another example when my my son was brought home he has scars all over right now and still blood patches on his nose and forehead and uh, some uh, incision of uh, some scar on his knee and he is not bothered about the pain at all he is just running around and it, i was just thinking to myself if that happened to me today i will be taking paracetamol painkillers and i will just go lie down and uh, rest and i will shut down and i will get even angry with certain people who would even try to call me and i will snap at my wife It's a lot of emotional turmoil but my son i saw him he's not bothered i am bothered i am disturbed i still get tears when i see him with the scarred face but he is not bothered because the lord says if any one of you behave like these little children that is the kingdom that you inherit the kingdom so my my son behaved just like as lord jesus had predicted as he had advised he bo- he never bothered about his pain because he doesn't know what that pain is all about at that time it must have been physically hurting but right now it's no more hurting he is not bothered about the scars it must have hurt him a little bit, but no he's not because he is completely ignorant of it he is living in the now present of the world of the word and of with the lord and he is not bothered about that physical scarring or the pain that he went because he knows the assurance that i am there with him and every time he sees me every time he sees his mother he is so assured that we are there to take care of him the same manner if we transform and renew our minds daily my brothers and sisters in every minute we will feel the tangible manifest presence of our lord abba in our lives and at that time no matter whatever happens in the world we we shall not feel the pain of that in our lives because we know he is holding us in his hands that's the assurance so that's the message that i want to leave with you and uh, i hope uh, that i was able to get this across to you this message about the transformation and i hope and pray that your lives also shall be transformed in such manner in a profound and deep manner to come steps closer to our lord jesus because he is waiting to come into our lives he is a father that was waiting to take care of he is he still asks the question you are my child would you call me father so with that thought i leave you today and let's meet uh, in the next session to talk about uh, transportation about transporting ourselves how the lord takes us through this journey so we discussed about being transferred from our states and transforming our minds and thoughts and with that of that uh, transferred or transformed states how does the lord take us through this journey of the transport so until we meet again god bless you